Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. If I'm elected president, our friends and allies across the globe will know that we stand with them. The bust of Winston Churchill will be back in the Oval Office, and the American Embassy in Israel will be in Jerusalem. Amen. Enemies across this world will know the United States is not to be trifled with. ISIS will be defeated. We will have a president willing go to Ted, utter go. the words radical Islamic terrorism. Oh, and yeah. the Ayatollah Khamenei will understand that he will never, ever, right. ever acquire nuclear weapons. Good Here at job. home, we'll reignite the promise of America. Young people coming out of school with student loans right, up you to get their the eyeballs. Picture. Ted Cruz did great last night. Do you know that anyone on that stage would make for a great president? Welcome to the Savage Nation. After the years that we have put up with this race-baiting, American-hating, immigrant-loving, I, I don't have enough words to describe what this creature in the White House has done to this country. And by the way, he's ramping up to do worse. He's trying to sign up as many immigrants as he can before the election, just as I predicted he would do in Government Zero and on this radio show numerous times. This enemy of the Constitution, this enemy of America, this enemy of everything decent about this country, this shady character in the White House, this imposter, is going to encourage immigrants to become citizens in time to vote in November of 2016. So let's look at the polls. There's only two polls I trust. The Drudge Poll and the Newsmax Poll. All the rest are fake. And the Drudge Poll of 648,000 votes shows Trump winning at 52%. And the rest are kind of, you know, Fiorina got 22%, Cruz 6%. Who else uh, showed up? Rubio show, showed a pulse. I don't like Rubio. I think that he's a complete fraud. I think Rubio is too thin for the job. He sounds like a kid. And I think he's a construct of some very powerful special interests. And I, that's all I would say. I don't particularly care for him. Uh, a Bush is a complete uh, a Bush family, you know, continuation of the, well, it's the establishment. I'm not for establishmentarians. I want something new. I do not like dynasties in the United States of America, which is why I oppose Hillary Clinton, uh, amongst many other reasons. Carson, very nice, very intelligent, very intellectual, very soft, very smart, but eh, not a president. Sorry. He'd be the president of a college. Yes, he could be a soft-spoken president of a college. That's about it, or on the board of a, a, a corporation. But what else? I mean, you need, don't you understand what we're talking about here? Why do you think Trump is surging, even though he's all over the map on issues, number one? And number two, even though he doesn't have answers to all the questions as specifically as some of the dunces in the media would like him to have, the gotcha people, the fools in the media think that you have to have all the answers. Well, let me tell you something, you don't. What you need is good people to run things for you, number one. And you need to know where to look for the facts. My best college professor said, don't worry about the facts because I'm not going to give you a quiz. I just want you to know how to look up the answers. That was the best teacher I ever had. Why doesn't tell, someone tell that to Jake a Woodpecker or to the would-be talk show host who no one remembers his name from the Unknown Network, the Bush League Network. I don't know where they got him from. And speaking of that, Oh, the re I want to finish the thought. The reason Trump is surging is not because he knows the facts or that his uh, litmus test has been passed by all of the, quote, popes of the conservative movement. All of the popes and the deacons and the archbishops, is he conservative enough? Did he pass my litmus test that I have on a toilet wall? All these fools who think that they're running something, when they're running nothing. The reason Trump is surging is because he's strong, he's got charisma. Let's, let's boil it down. In other words, he's got guts. He sounds like a man. And he speaks strongly. He's got confidence, in other words. And what America needs after this con man who has run this country down, run it off the rails, destroyed the military, destroyed this, the minds of our children in the schools, is somebody with guts to stand up for America. They figure he'll figure it out once he's in office. And that's why he's surging. So if you want to be one of those dunces and say, did he pass my litmus test on this or that, you're being a fool. 
You'd be like those idiots in the talk radio business who think that they actually control anything. And speaking of idiots in the media, I don't know what's uh, what got into Ann Coulter. Look, I'm not a fan of Ann. I think that her time came and went a long time ago. People don't know this, but I'm one of the first hosts in America to have ever had her on radio back in 94. I'll remember the day. I liked her then. And then something happened. And then she continued to play the act that was long dead. She's not 30, the flipping of the hair, the legs, the, the, uh, the wild, crazy, conservative, bomb-throwing girl. Last night, she sends out a, a tweet. How many effing Jews do these people think there are in the United States? After several candidates in Republican debate stressed the improved U.S. ties with Israel. I, I said, this can't be true. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. She, posed, uh, she posted these, I would think, anti-Semitic tweets at the end of the Wednesday Republican debate, accusing the candidates of pandering to Jewish voters, including one posing the hypothetical question, how many effing Jews do these people think there are in the United States? Now, I could see her criticizing making Israel more important than America. That would be one thing. But when you attack Jews instead of Israel's policies, you've crossed the line, Anne. You made a mistake. You touch the third world, the third rail, and you're going to be cast into the third world of, of the media after this. It's terrible. Coulter concluded her Twitter insanity by offering, quote, how to get applause from GOP donors. One, pledge to start a war. Talk about job creators. Uh, three, denounce abortion. Four, cite Reagan. And five, cite Israel. I uh, will ask you this question on the Savage Nation. Who other than Ann Coulter has committed media suicide during or after these debates? Who else made embarrassing debate comments such as, well, they should have picked me to run the debates. No, they wouldn't do that. I'm too smart. Who in the media has made a complete ass of themselves other than Ann Coulter? Now, let's go back to the debate itself. You see, the whole debate was set up as a fraud. We knew that going in. We knew that the RNC set it up to uh, have Trump fall. We know that. But he didn't. He rose. Because if a man's big enough, he'll overcome the impediments. But I would have answered every question that that moron, Jake uh, Woodpecker, threw at me by answering questions I wanted to answer. I would have said, Jake, I'll answer your question this way. What are Hillary Clinton's greatest policy failures? No, 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 no. I ask the questions. You answer my questions. I'd say, okay, Jake, what charges would you bring against Hillary Clinton uh, if you were president? Now, you stop it now. I ask the questions, and if you don't answer them, what are you going to do to me? Let me ask another question. And he asks another question, and every Republican should have come back and said, uh, Jake, <clears throat> would you indict Obama for any crimes if you were president? My friends, this was a disgrace. It was a setup to, to ridicule Republicans and Trump. And the real empty uh, suit there, the empty skirt, is Hillary Clinton. Here is a woman who is hiding behind the skirts of that monster, uh, whatever her name is, uh, I don't remember her name, the one from Florida, from Brooklyn, who knows where she's from, that, that, that fish mouth, that fish mouth embarrassment of the Democrat machine. So the question is, how could Hillary hide from a debate and then critic criticize the Republican debate while she herself has none? So she sends out the tweets, which, by the way, were not erased. She sent out tweets which were not uh, wiped clean attacking the Republicans, and she refuses to debate anybody. I would have asked every question that was asked of the Republicans of Hillary Clinton. I would have asked every question. Number one, Mrs. Clinton, Mrs. Clinton, can we feel comfortable with your finger on the nuclear codes when many people believe you're responsible uh, for the death of the ambassador to Libya and the destruction of Libya itself? Two, Mrs. Clinton, your experience in government is very interesting because everything you've touched has failed. Many people believe that the flood of refugees and the meltdown in the Middle East is a result of your foolish, your foolish, maybe well-meaning, but your foolish Arab Spring concept, which has resulted in the meltdown of governments across the Middle East. Mrs. Clinton, are you embarrassed by what you have done in the Middle East. 
Then they asked Bush a question about money. And uh, they said, Trump said that your $100 million you've raised makes you a puppet for your donors. I would say, Mrs. Clinton, don't you think that the hundreds of millions of dollars that you and your husband have raked in for the Clinton Library makes you a puppet for foreign governments? Can you please answer that? Mrs. Clinton, what would you do right now if you were president to get the Russians out of Syria, since we're supposedly be fighting with them against ISIS? You want me to go down the list? Oh, I'll go down the list. You know why? Because my team did more homework than anyone in radio. They have all 53 questions that were asked last night, which I have then uh, re-engineered to ask of the person who they should have been asked of, Hillary Clinton, the imaginary candidate. This is the Savage Nation. Here are some of the poll results from Drudge. I gave them to you. The Newsmax poll shows very similar results, which is very interesting. Different audiences, but some uh, crossover. Uh, as I said, Drudge showed Trump at 52%. Newsmax shows Trump at 46%. Fiorina is, sh is shown at 22% on Drudge. It's shown at 20% on Newsmax. Rubio comes in at, where is old Rubio? I can't find Rubio here. He's there somewhere. Where did he go? Bush, Carson, Christie, Cruz, Fiorino. Oh, Rubio, 6% on Drudge, 9% on Newsmax. Carson, 9% on Newsmax. I won't compare him. Cruz, 6%, Kasich, 3 Christie, 2 Bush, 1.4, Rand Paul, 1.2, Huckabee, 1.04, Scott Walker, 0.4. You know, it's interesting. I think Huckabee's a great candidate, a great guy. He's very smart. I have a whole new respect for him as I've watched him emerge. Do I think he could beat Hillary? I'm not sure he might. As I said earlier, don't get me, don't get me wrong. Any one of those men or that one woman on that stage would be better for America than the creature from the Black Lagoon waiting in the wings. Any one of them might just, just might clean the country up and save America. Just any one of them. Trump would do the best job. Rubio would do the worst job of all of them because he's a puppet of special interests, mainly Silicon Valley. The best I can figure it out, he's owned by several groups in Miami. And, of course, Larry Ellison of Oracle uh, shocked everyone two months ago when he came out supporting Rubio. The next day, Rubio came out supporting more H-1B visas for illegal aliens in order to make certain that more Indians come in and uh, steal the jobs from American IT workers. That feel like chalk on a blackboard? That just upset you a little bit? Because that's exactly what Rubio did once Larry Ellison supported him. It's that embarrassing. So I would, I would put an X through Rubio. He's not trustworthy. The others are good guys. She's okay, but Fiorina is not a player. I remember when she ran for the governorship of the state of California, and she, she lost, and she lost for one main reason. She lost because of her history at the company she worked at where she fired 30,000 people, that's number one. And number two, she lost because she would not take a stand against the hordes of illegals that were sucking California dry. She would not come out against illegal immigration. So don't expect her to change her, her spots. She was very good last night. It was very sad to hear she lost a child to uh, to drugs, drug abuse. That was a very touching moment, and I felt for her. But I'm sorry, she's not presidential material. Maybe she's another one who would be good running the University of California or another university. She's not ready for the national stage. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Most of the country could care less about the debate last night. Look at the sad state of the New York Post. Headline, meet the students living in million-dollar dorms. Jessica Alba says she was body checked by Kylie's goons. Busting out, Kate Upton's cleavage steals the show at NWFW. These are the headlines on the New York Post, if you can believe it. But the front page is even worse. The Trump hatred of uh, Murdoch Jr. is overwhelming. Beautiful Carly Trumps to Donald. Utter rubbish. First of all, she's not beautiful. She's what we would have called in high school. Uh, I can't say it on the air. I don't mean to offend people. 